Hi, my name is Ronaldo Quintero, and on this video, I will show you the steps that I take when I do an illustration like this. I'll be discussing the tools, I'll give you tips when drawing these kind of illustrations, and I'll show you uh, the use of each tool, as well as the ideation and creation process that I go through when I do an illustration like this. This is gonna cover from the rough sketch to the final uh, drawing as we see here. And I hope you enjoy it and thank you very much. And let's get started. Okay, let's talk about some art materials. First, I, uh, I would like to talk about the paper. The paper I use here is an A4 size uh, Muse uh, brand uh, sketch pad. This sketch pad is made in Japan and the brand Muse is a, an amazing brand, has an amazing wide variety of papers. So try to check it out. It's hard to find this sketchbook, but and uh, the paper has a great quality. For pencils, I use the Graph Wood Cut and Dutch. I use the 2B and 3B. These pencils are super smooth and they react uh, lovely to any kind of surface. They're easy to erase and they are really durable. Although they are really big expensive, but they are totally worth it. And they, to me, they last really long. The next one is the Prismacolor uh, B which is a stand for brush pen. The special thing about this pen is uh, the tip. It's not too soft or it's not too hard, and you can have a lot of control with this pen. Next on the list is the Tombow uh, black pen. This pen has two tips, one like a, as a brush and one more like a regular marker, and it's really useful for like uh, blocking or filling black uh, areas of your drawing as well as doing the the outline. The next one is the Stylo Pencil Pen. This pen has a amazing feature, which is the the tip of the pen has a spear shape uh, shape, and which allows a better grip into the paper. I found this tool really reliable, although it dries really fast because I use it a lot. And uh, the only problem is that there is no uh, refillable version of it. So you always have to buy a new box and you ended up spending a lot of uh, money on this pen. But the quality is awesome. One of the best pens I have tried so far. Next is the Neater Eraser. We need a, I need a, this eraser be, to uh, light down or to make lighter all the drawing and be more subtle when I erase. If I use a hard eraser, I will lose lines. With this neater eraser, I'll be able, I'm able to be more uh, uh, subtle when I erase. Next, I have the hard eraser. This hard eraser, I use it for cleaning when I already have the pen, the pen uh, section or all the inking section done. I go with this eraser, and the thing about this eraser, which is not the white one, is more like like a rubber eraser is that it will really take the pencil out of the paper instead of the other ones which can create like like some smudge and and actually damage your drawing and as the last item on this list is a comb pencil sharpener the special thing about these uh, tools that i'm mentioning is that the graph wood and the hard eraser and the comb pencil sharpener uh, they combine each other. Sometimes it's hard when you have a uh, you have different kind of pencil sharpeners that doesn't work with your pencil, or you have an eraser that doesn't work with, with your materials that you have. But these materials they come in a group. The eraser, the sharpener, and the pencils work together, and if you use them together, then you will have better results instead of combining different tools. So this is it. This is the our materials that I use. These are my tools that I carry when I go to conventions, when I go to draw outside, to do coffee shop sketches. And I highly recommend you to explore and try new tools. The more you try new tools, you'll find the right ones. And uh, definitely give them a try and explore with different materials. So after all this list, I think it's time to draw. And then now I'll show you step-by-step step what I do with each of these tools and how is my process. Hope you like it. And if you have any questions, let me know. Rock and roll. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to a new video. In this video process, I'll be uh, showing you the process that I go through 
when I'm uh, drawing a commission for, uh, especially I do this uh, for conventions. So it's uh, a process that I've kind of like developed for doing these quick sketches as I have to finish them in during the convention and deliver them to the convention. Uh, these are really fun because they challenge me to improve. They challenge me to think faster challenged me to create a, a, a large amount of drawings in a very fast time. And uh, I think this is one of a, like, uh, it's a good practice, I think. I take it as a practice as well as a, as a challenge, as everybody who wants to have a commission from me, they tell me what kind of characters they want and the settings and sometimes the pose. <clears throat> so sometimes for me, it's a surprise for to, to see what the commissioner is gonna come with which idea or which character so sometimes I get crazy ideas which I, I love because sometimes I find myself drawing this uh, like a uh, you know certain characters so I want to explore with different things and to explain this stage here um, this is the the rough stage I really go super light and start defining uh, the you know the pose I think like uh, at the beginning I go with this uh, 2B pencil and this 2B pencil is one of my main tools when I'm, I'm going to this uh, when I go through this phase of sketching which is really loose yet precise because I'm looking to to find a shape for the pose and uh, with this page uh, with this pose I didn't have a reference <clears throat> so I tried to come up with with it my, on my own as since I have drawn the pose uh, a few times ago Okay, I have drawn the post a couple of times, so I, I, I look forward to combine those things. And I go really loose and I try to, uh, you know, give roundness to the body. I think like one of the things that can make the, the, the face uh, of the drawing uh, successful is finding the three-dimensionality and the right proportions. I don't go and think about details, although I like to place details uh, or marks of a costume or, you know, like parts of the costume because it helped me to to figure out uh, how it should look in, 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 in perspective, okay? So I go through, uh, you know, a little sketch and then I go for a more cleanup and this is where I make the choices or should this leg be like this or... I check like the, the the proportions like okay this leg is going good and I think about the feet what is gonna be the feet I don't want it to point it I wanna I wanna have like that feeling that there's a you know foreshortening in the pose <clears throat> and as I go I check the reference because <clears throat> I, I am as you check the reference you are more sure of, of what 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 is the next step and you start like it's like uh, taking down each part of the costume that you should uh, add on the image. Sometimes you can miss certain things. Sometimes the the reference doesn't have all the details that you that you have there. So you have to play with what you have. And, uh, and this is the, the, the part where I, I think about the, the expression. What do I want from the expression and, and both characters? I think at the beginning already, already had the idea that I wanted to combine Jesse with the cat, uh, I don't remember the cat. <laughs> I, I I haven't seen Pokemon in a long time, but yeah, yeah, see. And I want them to, you know, have a, a little bit more storytelling because I know they have a, they're pretty really funny characters and I want them both to be there. Um, yeah, I use my Mewtwo. No, Mewtwo is a, is a really powerful one. And no, Meow, I think it should be Meow because it's, uh, well, anyway, um, so, and uh, this is the this is where I, I figure out like uh, more of the roundness and proportions and perspective and thinking like like how can I give that like perspective with the with the items or the designs of the character. So I think about all the all of that and I correct myself as I go. Sometimes I do a mark and then I put place another mark and then I can compare between them and I say okay I think that the, these two are gonna be fine. Oh, I think this this should be like this, and I think about how how is the body gonna be behind the character. Try to have a logic on that, because sometimes it's difficult. You have drawings that 
that you have to really solve what is behind the main character and um and I think that that's why I wanted uh, the challenge. I only had the character. They, they told me that I think that the, the request just was just Jesse, but I really wanted to to have something else because if you every time you're gonna do an illustration, <clears throat> I think you should add something extra. If somebody t- tells you, oh, you're just a character. Well, why can I combine this character with and try to come with like you know even if it's something not as complicated. I mean, you can have a like, like a nice idea and. Uh, and even if the design, design is, is simple, which is awesome, the more simple the characters, the more easier for me is to figure out the, the proportions and, and the perspective and the foreshortening. Because many of these uh, costume designs are made for for animation, so they have to be really easy to, to draw and they have to show form and they have to be iconic. So I, I go with this pencil and I start adding details and placing all the marks. I pay attention to the eyes I give them the roundness they need. I double check that that the proportions are right, that the field feels rounded, that the nose is pointing, and then I give myself a, the free the freedom to change the lips and add a little bit of expression with the with the lips as well, because not only the eyebrows are the main focus and the eyes, but uh, the mouth can really like even a subtle change can you know be a little bit different from the people who are seeing the drawing and feel a little bit of, of a, you know, a connection. And that's me just talking when sometimes I get this. <laughs> I'm drawing and people come to the table. And this is during the convention, so I have to talk. I have to do a bunch of stuff. And uh, it takes time to, you know, to really, <laughs> you know, manage these two things of talking and doing the sketch and Many people, obviously, you, I, I, I can do it. Some people cannot, they need the silence. And sometimes I'm quiet on my booth because, you know, I, I really need to solve this part. Once I get this solved and I know what is what I'm going to draw, the rest is just like cleaning and I'm making better the lines for what I need. I think this pencil here, I'm not sure, but I think I changed for a 3B. And the 3B will give me, I can go over the marks. It's like a marking again. And since I, this is like, like, I feel like this is like Photoshop, but like in traditional way, you know, you go really light and then you start going build, you start building the, the sketch and then you start correcting things. And sometimes it, uh, you, I, I feel like uh, you can be a little bit loose on, on some parts of the drawing. So if, if you concern too much about that, everything has to be 100% correct, then then you have to think what is what I want to show. Do I want to show that this drawing is really detailed or I want to show a feeling with the piece. And in this case, I wanted to show if it's something like a, like, you know, a little bit sassy, a little bit angry, a little bit pissed off, but still happy. Uh, they feel partners. So I think about that expression and I don't want her like to be like, you know, like, like common, common, like any, any expression. But anyway, so I, as since I, since I go and, and define everything, I go again for the hand, and the hand was tricky because of, you know perspective and all that. So I try to figure out how that hand is uh, is resting or is holding the, the hip. And well, so I, I I try to you know add some sexiness there to have some fun. I think they will. I think enhancing the boobs will bring more of the fortunery, okay? Okay, once I have the drawing done, I go with this uh, soft eraser. It's a, it's a nice eraser to, you know, erase uh, and clean a little bit the drawing. You have to be subtle with this. You don't want to lose the sketch and you don't want to lose the, the lines that you've made. So you try to, to erase and keep it like lightly. Uh, it's, it's like reducing like the opacity of a layer in Photoshop, basically. But with traditional, so I use that eraser and I figure out things as again, I, I maybe I erase it a little bit more. But anyways, I that's, that's one of the, the tools I, I need the most. If I don't have that eraser, then I will have a lot of troubles because uh, having a, a hard eraser will basically delete or erase the image completely, or at least most of it. 
So I don't want to lose the, the, all the figuring out, all the all the work that I did. So I go with the eraser, and as you can see, I, I think, okay, I'll figure out all the, all the areas, and I, I think about the overall shape and the silhouette, you know. And because we humans, we see objects, and we see the silhouette of it, and then we see what is inside. I think the silhouette will, if it's something, if it's a shape that is appealing as a silhouette, it, it means that the the character is working. So that means that the character is working, <clears throat> and this is a technique used in in all the fields of illustration, which is like and design in general. Everything is about the shape design and the beauty of it and the balance. And as I work with this, I I feel that I need to work on that on that silhouette that really reads, you know. If, it, if it, the silhouette can read and the shapes are appealing, then as I say, we have a successful drawing. And as I, uh, I keep exploring the, 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 the designs of the eyes and all of that, I, as I say again, I correct myself. I add uh, more, more uh, precise uh, lines and, and... And I started committing. That's the thing. You have to commit to the lines. And as I work, I commit to certain lines that I think are the right ones for the drawing. And it feels, if you see the whole video, like a speed up, it's more like a blur image at the beginning and you start making it sharper, sharper, sharper as you go. That's the way, that's the way I see it, this, you know. That's how, that's why the, the, the sketch is so important because this is the point where you measure everything. You are sure that this is what you want. And if this is what you want, then you can go ahead and, and, and commit and settle for, for that shape or, or line that you're looking for. Also, you have to make sure that all the character fits in the page. It happens to me sometimes that I think about certain design and how it looks in the page, it, it doesn't feel that appealing. And it's not because the character is drawn, uh, in a, is not drawn correctly. It's more that the character is not placed correctly uh, in, as a team with the, with the page. The page has to have spaces for let the character breathe and make the composition work. And that's one of the things that I found like, difficult, I guess. When I'm working on these characters, the face was okay, but then I found that the Jesse's hair was way bigger than what I have done. So I have to increase those those lines, and it will touch the edge of the page. Fortunately, most of these can be changed on Photoshop, so I don't have any big trouble about that. But for the piece, the original piece, I think about those things, you know. And sometimes it happens. But if you have a good drawing and it's working, then, well, I'm sorry. I crop it up a little bit on the top. This pencil, I think, is the 3B. As you can see, it's easy to make the marks. I don't go with the 2B because if you try to do the lines with the 2B, if you try to make the lines darker with the 2B, then you're going to do, you're going to apply more pressure to the paper and it's going to make it harder to, to get it erased after that, you know. I might repeat myself a few times during this video <coughs> because, well, it's a real time. and but I, but I think it's good to repeat sometimes the same things because uh, it, it will stay in your mind longer. But what else can I tell you about this? I, I enjoy a lot of, a lot of this traditional commissions, especially because I'm away from the computer. I enjoy digital coloring and everything, but there's something about, you know, traditional work that you can take a pencil, a pen, go somewhere else and enjoy drawing. That's, uh, that's something that I really enjoy more than just sitting down on my computer and working for hours on just sitting in one place without interaction. That's something of its downside of that. But anyway, and let's let's talk more about the drawing now okay okay so now i'm going with the 
with a darker pencil. I think it's called a, I think it's a B3 pencil. I go over the lines and this time I really define it because I'm preparing myself for the inking. And at this point, I really want to make sure that all the lines or the main lines are not missing any section of the drawing. Because if I start inking, then I, I find an area that it doesn't work, then I'll have troubles because I have to draw and figure out and a problem might come if I'm not really sure about the whole thing. So once I'm sure about it, I go ahead and I go with the pencil uh, stylo and I define the eyes. I think like I, I take the risk of starting with the eyes because if the eyes, I can make the eyes work, the rest will work. Uh, at least I think that if I have the face working, it will be great for me. And this is the area where I, after drawing all the, the that warming up or this of the sketch, I feel prepared to tackle all those lines that are really they have to be clean, and they have to uh, represent what I what I have under, uh, or what I have uh, on the sketch. And here's when I compare a lot, and I compare like uh, the design. If this uh, section is here, then it should be on this height or it should be lower, or it should go a little bit up. Then as I as I go, I, I take decisions and and I like to, you know, take my time with this because if you if you mess it up here and it has happened for, to me a, a few times, then it's a, it's a pain in the ass, you know, because you have to go back again and figure a way. I, don't, I, I forgot to bring, uh, I usually forget to bring the white ink but I never use the white ink because obviously if people will see it and they will see, well, look at the matter, what is this? So that's a, that's a, the, the challenge here. And uh, for me, I like this uh, uh, part of the drawing because it's like is a is a ink, is a inking, and I thinking about the lines, I'm thinking about how these lines uh, how they have to be, how they will connect. And it's a good, good exercise, I feel, because when you are doing drawings, that will give you, uh, when, when once you start doing drawings, that this will give you the, you know, the, the courage to commit to the lines. And it's something that many artists uh, struggle, is just to commit to the lines and be sure, and even if something is, doesn't look perfect or it's not completely round, then uh, deal with it and then find a way of of of, of do just you know doing it and have that relaxed uh, feeling when you draw because if you start thinking about it you start thinking about problems or you start thinking about other things the drawing will be affected so at this, this time I really focus on the drawing and I think about all those things that I really want to or, or I think about all the lines huh? before I do the line I think okay it should be this way and I start settle settle down for for certain areas of the of the drawing, you know. Because if I feel like if I figure it, if I if I, if I can figure it out uh, um, successful successfully the areas that I need to solve, then I can move faster to the easy ones, which is like the for me the body is more is a more easier. And if I solve that I, as I did with the face, I can move on. Okay, and as I move on, as I say already, I start doing the long lines. These lines are tricky because they're easy to miss. <clears throat> and you really have to know which lines are you going to use. Even if they don't come perfect, I can fix them somehow. Later on, I'll show you what I do. because. I keep the same line cause consistent and I try to draw everything I don't try to, at this uh, level at, the, at this stage I don't try to to make to draw the lines because I mean to it's not drawing the line it's just when you draw a line you can go over it and then you can give thickness and then you can give a different properties to the line according to what you want so you can make it thicker or or yeah you can make it thicker or thinner and this pen helps me to have that uh, consistent line. It's clean and it, it works. 
this pen I like it a lot because the the tip of the pencil oh sorry of the pen it has a it's a, like a like an arrow so it, it has that uh, it has a grip when you draw on the paper and I found these in a in a store in art center and I, I love them because I try to I like to try different pens and I was looking for the right one I have a bunch of pens and I didn't like them it's like, it's like when you draw with a pen or it's too thick or the ink doesn't match I feel too flat but with this one I can have more grace with my lines I, I and I have already a lot of confidence when I'm working with this pen actually I just recently bought a new box because this pen that I'm using in this video was the last one uh, the last one that I had in the in the in the box in my box of tools and what can I say as you can see I already dropped the reference since I have everything I needed from the character I now can can just focus on the lines and, and focus on that process and as you can see so far my process is a real process I like to have the sketch and then go over it and then go with the inks and then uh, go with a, with a marker and then do you know I, I like to increase it as I go and it has worked for me and I mean that's the way I, I do it sometimes I can if I have a, a good idea I can go straight to the lines but that's that's the exercise you know how can I l avoid completely the whole sketch like I guess like a Kim Jong Ji he just draw out of out from his imagination but everything that he draws is comes from the visualization that he has on his brain and one of the questions that somebody asked him is like how can you just go ahead and just draw like you do and he said like everything he he does in the big canvas or any drawing is a box and in that box he just figure out the perspective and based on that perspective he can just figure out the position of the limbs and the form obviously this guy is amazing that he's a superstar he's walking touring around the world we uh, mere humans and mortals have to go through this process and struggle but for me it's, it's fun once you have done this a lot of times and for commissions then it really helps you later on for for cleaning and building your drawing skills these are the good things that these are the good exercise and apart from that I'm getting paid for it so it's like amazing anyways and and I really want that piece to be to be a a piece that the commissioner will and once they see the piece they will say oh fuck it is amazing I love it and they go happy I don't want anybody just to come here and to, to my table and say oh well it's okay and it has never happened to me unfortunately uh, sorry sorry it hasn't happened to me fortunately so that's that's good but sometimes I get people who take the commission they just go away they don't even say thank you or I like it or whatever so you know they're different people and because I do all of that and then just take the commission and just go <laughs> and I, okay I guess that, that's everything I was supposed to receive from this apart from the money but yeah anyway now you can see that the drawing is taking a lot of shape and that's what I'll once, once I'm in this point I, I can just talk more and interact with people but this pen definitely if you have the chance you can try you can find this pen this pencil stylo in Amazon that's where I can buy the boxes I haven't seen any other place or I haven't searched for other places apart from Amazon and they deliver super fast I think I'm gonna buy another box after this because it's, it's like a random surprise sometimes you see one you, sometimes I try one pencil and it's so fucking dry <laughs> and it doesn't work at all okay and this part of the drawing I figured out the hair I didn't figure out completely all the lines but since I've drawn the hair and it's just a curve I can I can find out the, the that then this is when I when I think about the 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 hair and I think about the perspective too where the hair should be and it shouldn't block the shape and it should be 
easy to read. That's why he's, he's like in the middle of the boobs there. I don't want them, the, the shape to touch anything. There are certain rules about drawing, like like avoiding tangents and uh, avoiding areas where uh, many lines collide at the same point. And that, that's something that I try to avoid when I work with a silhouette, even though it's still a flat drawing there and it's just like one, it's about lines, I think about the, the overhaul silhouette. And you will see later on how I can lift much more the silhouette from the drawing after I finish with this step. And you can see that I still have the pencil uh, sketch there and I use it until I have all the information that I needed from the sketch under that. I don't want to erase anything until like I feel like, okay, I'm not missing anything. I hear I'm missing the feet. I think that's when I realize, oh yeah, I have the feet. I'm, I'm missing the feet. And then I find all the things that I was missing, like the R and these lines here. And I think, okay, this has to be rounded. And I think about the fabric, the fabric that is uh, above the, the chest. I think how it should look. You have to follow the, the, the fabric and the contour of the, of the body. So yeah, still, still haven't done the feet. But uh, that's my that's my my sign that has been completed, and I didn't do the feet, so that means that probably I didn't figure it out completely. So I'm gonna go and jump to the next step, and I'm giving cards away to people, <laughs> business cards. All right, okay. You can see I have some some eye drops and a lot of the same markers. <laughs> Just in case, just to be safe of that, of that, and not like missing some tools. And now I try with the Tombow marker. The Tombow marker is a good pen, but I guess, um, yeah, you don't see that well. I guess not. And I think that the, the tip I used it before, and the tip was really good. But now with this Prisma Color uh, brush pen, I think it's way better than the Tombow. Because I can give thickness and and I can have like I can change the weight the the line weight of the of the drawing and I can add uh, shadows already and this is the point that as I add all the as I as I play with the lines and the thickness and everything I start adding uh, small shadows or what I like to call well not what I like to call what it is is contact shadows. So the areas that are touching or they have like a, a little bit of a cast shadow, I try to find all of those in the drawing because those little uh, sections with black like I did with the hand helps me to turn the, the, the to turn and give more volume to the figure. Feels that the arm is on top of that. And I think about the, the shoulder. And the shoulder should be thicker down there because it has more weight. Also, I try not to go overboard, overboard with this pen. It can be a lot of fun, but you have to be really selective to, to where are you gonna place the marks. You know, you see there's some thickness there, so that means the hair is casting a shadow on top of the, of top of meow. Go ahead and challenge myself to ink the eyelashes. And I make a little bit of zoom there because this is when you have to take take a deep breath and go for it, you know? <laughs> go for it and don't be afraid. There's always light in the tunnel, at the end of the tunnel. And as you can see now, it was working. It's okay, I did it. And I had the pressure that I was recording this too. <laughs> So I really have to do it like properly. Okay. I think about the lips. That that section is a is one of the sides of the lips. But you know, sometimes I I can do that, or I can just shade the top lip lip. I think the top lip makes makes it makes that a nice shape, it's sexy. So 
So I like to, to make the upper lip darker. And it creates like a shadow too. I think it's cute. I like it. Anyways. Something that I realized here <coughs> is that even though I figure out the, the three dimensionality of the face of the of Meow, I figured it out. I found that I didn't do I didn't have enough space space and three dimensionality between each head. And when you see the Jesse's face it should be like like closer to us, but at the same time. Uh, you need a space of the Meow's face. It feels like it's rounded, but it needs to be more deep. And to fix that, I'm going to use the dark of my pen to emphasize the uh, the inner section of the mouth of the the mouth in, inside the mouth. So I go with the pen and try to create more uh, casting shadows. At that point, I didn't feel I didn't feel that I had it resolved. But I go ahead and since I have a lot of drawing to cover, and the areas that I cannot figure it out at the beginning, I just leave them there. And as I work with the other areas of the drawing, things start coming together. And then sometimes that's when you feel okay. This is this should be like this because after doing all the drawing, I can see that that the section that I'm missing it should it will look good if I do it this way. So sometimes I jump, you know, I like to, I like to jump here and there because it's like, it's like having a building, even though I haven't done the feed yet, but I'm waiting. I don't know what the fuck I'm waiting for, but I guess I'm going this time to do it. Yeah, I'll do it. You know, I thought about boobs. Okay. I'm going to have that shadow there in the boobs. So I like it there. <laughs> Who doesn't like shadows in the boobs? And then some casting shadow from the fabric on the top. You can see it, it makes it more rounded just by using, you know, dark accents or having sections of, uh, of dark. I don't know what I grabbed again, the Tombo, Tombo pen. But I guess I wanted to have a, a more straight line instead of a brush line and it worked i just needed to have that angle and that uh, that break of the lines for for the design of the feet or the shoe or whatever then one of the rules that i learned in well i learned a long time ago but it applies very well for uh, storyboards is that the closest object to you is the one who should have uh, the thicker lines and since the chest and the head and meow are the are the areas that are closer to us then those areas should be thicker you see just only tiny bits of dark if you have if you can place it in the right spot they make the drawing work and I love doing these black uh, sections of the like uh, uh, latex you know it's super fun sometimes I feel like I could I can I can push it a little bit more with the with the darks and with the with the sections that are black, but I just need those those shapes. That those shapes are enough. I can go back with pencil or another another pen and create a darker effect. But anyway, this is the section when I'm doing this. All of that. I think about think about that dark shadow. I think this is from I got this from the from checking the X-Men comics and seeing all the work from Jim Lee and all these guys that that I follow when I was a 
checking more comics than manga. You know, those are the things I like to grab from from comics and mix it then. Mix it, mix it all together. Now I'm doing uh, another section, another step of the process, which is adding uh, more dark areas or shadows, I will say, with uh, just just with with lines and creating that. I try to fo to make the, all the lines follow the same direction or try to draw each line following the form of the area that I'm drawing. And the, I see, I do that more around the in, in the in the hair, and I do that in the around the neck or the rounded areas. You can instead of doing straight lines, you can go more rounded, and that will make the the form the form read way more. And when I feel that this stage. I have everything that I need from the sketch. I think it's time to do a clean up for this. But I don't forget certain lines, like in the, the eyelid and all the you know, minor lines that I might forget. Here I go with a needle eraser. This one is already open that has been used. And I like to put it like as a, as a poop shape. Uh, that's what I call it. And uh, erase, be gentle with the paper. Start getting the, the, the soft marks first and then leave the darker marks for the hard eraser. I go slowly around the face. Remember to wait for a while and let the drawing dry. You don't want that eraser dragging some of the ink around your page. You know, go smoothly. Take your time doing this. Don't go too hard on the paper. You don't want it to destroy it. You have to be gentle, be gentle, smooth around the eyes, you don't want to lose any any piece of paper, and yeah, this is a, the clean up, part of the clean up. Then I go with a hard eraser, and I go ahead and try to, to erase the the guidelines and some some darker lines that are still residing on the paper. This eraser, as I said at the beginning, is really good because it's, it really takes out the pencil from the paper. Unlike the other white erasers, which can be okay for a text, but for like a drawing when you're using different kind of like different pencils, this one will really take that and clean, make a really clean version. I mean, it will really, really, it will really clean your page. That's the point of it. Okay. Once it's done, I clean it up. My hand is not the best. I should have a, a fang or something that I can use to, to, to do, do that, but I'll take the risk. It's okay. I don't have it, enough time to carry all of that. So I go back with the pen, pencil stylo and I start defining more, more lines and making dark certain areas. But when I mean dark, I don't mean with, the, with black, totally black. I'm more like, a, more like cross hatching, but mine is not that. It doesn't have that cross <laughs> that much, but it's like a cross hatching technique. And at this stage, I think about the areas that should be darker, that, that are casting shadows, or I need to redefine. <clears throat> I was a little bit uh, indecisive about how much ink should I place here, because I want the pencil to create the gradation of the pen. Of the pen. So I want to have very selective uh, marks for that. And that line that I'm doing right now is really important because it gives more three-dimensionality. I use the seams of the of the dress, of the clothes, of the texture, of the, sorry, the other texture of the, of the fabric to create more form. It really describes uh, the, the, the shape more using those, those uh, 
Yeah, those lines. This commission, this commission, as you can see, it takes me uh, around an hour or so to finish it. I take around four to five commissions every day on the convention. Sometimes I take less, depending to depending of uh, how many people are in the convention, if I'm selling other books or I'm doing other talks or checking other people's artwork. But that's around the average of those. And it's good to know how much time it will take you because that will give you uh, a good um, uh, estimate of how many commissions can you take during the day. You see these lines that I added there. I want to have more roundness to the to the to the hair uh, mass. And that was something that I was explaining. You know, by adding shadows, it, it make it can make the the shapes turn better. And that's what I do here. Personally, I would like to explore more with colors and use the uh, markers. I still deciding if I should buy that and if people will actually commission a full color piece I have to really get uh, uh, the skills to be able to do it uh, as fast as these drawings I'm sure I can do it but I wonder about the paper and the material so so far right now I'm really comfortable doing this and that's I think that's good enough for what I do my colors are mainly digital, so I have to decide do I want this in watercolor or markers. And there is something in specific that I like the black and white because I can take that black and white and then clean it. But if I take a color one, then I will have to play with the colors I have done. I don't like personally that the, that effect of the marker that when you do every line you can see the lines and when they dry you can still see the lines and the direction that you did this, the the lines for the marker more like a dry marker I, I'm sure there are techniques for that that's why I'm saying I need more skills on markers I have used grayscale markers and they are great maybe I can use them in these commissions and that will be an extra cost for the for that because that, that's a lot of marker But definitely there's some things I want to try. Uh, I started doing this way of drawing last year when I started doing com commissions at conventions. And it really helped me. I think that it, it, it was a, a good burst of, of practice doing these sketches. And as you can see, my style is more about, I think about more about line weights and how to make uh, all the lines appealing and and make the lines connect to each other i think about those things i think about the shadows it's more about a choice how much do i want to render this how much do i want to add black or how much do i want to to use these pens or and all that so it's, it's up to you at the end i think i can go a little bit more with the with the inks and all that but at the same time I like something simple and direct something that you can as soon as you see it it's appealing and it's okay I don't like uh, do over detail drawings because I think it drags away from what I want on my work which is the, the character and the motion and and the pose and all that I found that nowadays with digital illustration there's an overload of, of details and tiny pieces and things that I find annoying to be honest sometimes I see digital art that looks amazing and the skills are awesome but the amount of detail is so stupid that I get bored and the characters are just like dry there's no no, no character no emotion no facial expression it's just one character like just dead inside with a bunch of details around and that's something I've been fighting uh, of not of not doing I don't, I don't I don't enjoy that I enjoy more like being simple and direct with my drawing 
but anyway everybody can everybody can do the art they want i rather do this combination of comics and manga so which i, I love it and i have been improving through through the years okay now at this point i feel like okay i got everything i need from the pencil i must be careful because i think at this stage i start thinking too much and then i can start screwing it up i think about the shadows of the of the eyebrows and I have to be really careful I think I, 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 I when I finished I was like oh fuck I mess it up but then I thought okay if I use pencils then I can I can balance that area that dark area that I did but you see at this point I'm, I'm hesitating about which other lines what extra lines can I add that I really needed I double check and and once I'm unsettled, I go with the pencils. I go back with the pencil. I think this is a 2B and then I start adding some shading. Mixing the inks and the pencil shading is really fun as I can create a, a, a smooth transition of the gray scale with the drawing. Also, it gives more depth and value. It's like, it's, like, it's like mixing, you know, because I, I, I like both things. I like, like, I like pencil drawing, but as well, I like the dark of the ink. And I think like mixing, uh, mixing them both will help. Also, I can make more, more obvious the effect of the perspective and the foreshortening using the right values. Ah, I forgot the line, you see, sometimes you find lines that, that are missing. Even though I check it a bunch of times, there are always, always some lines that are missing. You know, I shade under the Meow's face, head, around the Jesse's head. I try to to add uh, to use the color of the hair of of, Jay, uh, of Jesse to make a Meow pop, since Meow is whiter than the red of the character. That will help a lot. And just by doing that, and I use my finger <laughs> to uh, to make the the pencil more smooth, that finger. <laughs> I I I think about those things. Then I think about the shoulder. If I have the shoulder darker, then her face will pop up, and it will feel that the face is closer than the shoulder. So it's like pushing and pulling uh, sections of the drawing until you get the desired effect. The funny thing is that you can have a lot of wide range of the uh, when using this grayscale. You can really go overboard, you can really go light. But since I have defined already my darkest dark, which is the ink, then, then I know how to control that value. And again, with my finger, I make things more smooth and fine. I like the pencil texture, but at the same time, I like it to be soft and especially in the lips, you know, be subtle. So just by doing that, they already have that feeling. And this is when I fix all that, all the, all that mark of the pen that I did earlier. You see, now it feels that it's connected with that pencil. It's like a mix of inks and pencil and it, it, it works for, for what I do. Then I remember about the character. The character has a, a dark ears. So I have to go darker than the red of the character. Darker value, even just slightly darker, it will make a difference. If you make it the same, then you start making everything flat. I do the same for the mouth and for the rest of the body there. And I continue, I, as you can see, I'm very gentle with my strokes and with the way I handle the pencil, you have to be controlled, take your time to do it. And the more you do it, you, you will get faster. Even if it's not perfect, you can use the finger as I do in here to, to make it soft. There is a tool for that. I don't have it right now. I think with my finger, I can just, just go ahead and do it faster and easier. I have more control time with the tool already using many tools for this drawing, so my finger is enough.
and I correct the eyes. I using the value of the paper and using the pencil, I can make the eyes look wider. Just adding a little bit of shading around the eyes. And that's that's really effective for the way. Um, what else can I say about this? I I think about like how to do the the graduations of that. Um, oh well, let's guess what? <laughs> we st I stopped the recording because somebody wanted me to sign the books, and I'm here signing the new sketchbook, which you can have and you can own on my Etsy store. So this is a this is a shameless advertisement here. So here you are for the books. Thank you very much. I'm doing a tutorial. Okay, I'm back to the tutorial. And I wanted to ground the character for that, some shadows. Shadows are tricky. And you have to think about the direction of the light and the perspective of the ground and uh, all that together. So I go slightly, I add some marks of the underground and that will reinforce the perspective. And I don't need to go really detailed, just, just a few marks will give the idea of what I want to convey here, okay? Obviously, I'll go back again with that, probably with a, with a pen, and add the final details um, of it. I go with a darker, I think this is a 3B or 5B. I'm using a 5B too, so I recommend you to use uh, 2B, 3B, and then jump to 5, and that jump is, I think you can have the, the 4B range. Uh, it's achievable between the two pencils. And I go over again with this darker. This is definitely a 5B. It creates a darker, darker area. So I'm thinking I'm choosing about, I'm thinking about the background. I think about that too. If you add a yeah, a little bit of tone in the background, it will make the character pop. So that's that's the thing about making sections of the character, even the whole character, pop. You have that side there, and then the attention will be, I'll, I'll bring the attention to the face of the character. The background is a little bit blurred with my finger, of course. And that will be, that'll, that'll create a better, a better illustration, just uh, by adding a little bit of, of that. I think about more textures on the ground. I think about lines that I can apply. I think about areas that could be darker. And it's working, you see? Around the edges of the of the of the hair, you can have some shadows there. It's light shadows, but your the eye will will catch that as the as if the form is turning. Because the, the shape of this character, the, the, the hairstyle of this character is really, <laughs> really strange, you know, it's like a, it's like a big curve. So to create that roundness feel, I need that. That's my signal of approval. And I guess I'm going to go with the eraser to add highlights for the, yeah, some highlights. I go with this eraser, it's a hard eraser. I forgot to mention this tool, but it's just like, like any kind of a eraser that you can find on any pen. You can use that. That will that will help me to do the highlights. Oops, I dropped that there. Do the highlights and take that. Yeah, and it works. Also helps to have the hard eraser to create a, a rim light around the character. Create light sources. And separate since I have the, the hair is darker and the and the globes are darker I need a highlight I need a light to separate and have a break between them so from here on it's just more adding details and, and adding the final touches for the illustration uh, 
as you can see it's really fun I really enjoy doing this in the conventions and what I enjoy the most is uh, giving them to the commissioner and seeing their reaction of them and most of them are really pleased and they're really happy about it and that's that's the reward that I get because the money comes and goes but the rewards of having like somebody take a piece of your work and appreciate it for what it is is way higher than you know any money um, I think I'm a few minutes before I finish here but I want to first uh, thanks uh, patreon thank you guys for supporting the work without you I, I wouldn't be able to have this camera which I used to record this I wouldn't be able to buy the materials that I use for my work I wouldn't be able to travel and do all the things and the projects that I'm doing right now so I'm really thankful for all the support given and for all my projects and all of that and if you have any questions make sure to send them to me and I will be open to answer any question that you have for these drawings okay and uh, and thank you very much and before I finish here I would like to say that I like to take these sketches that I do here I can take some pictures and upload it but I kind of save them for Photoshop in Photoshop I can multiply and make the values darker the problem is if I really want to make the values darker on the like right right there on the illustration it'll take me more time because I really have to push the pencil and I have to be really way more careful if I really gonna push the values so I use Photoshop to clean up and fixing some lines that I've been missing or some artifacts that might be found later on so I think that's it I think that the illustration is done and I completed the whole thing and I erase here and there, I clean the face, I make sure that everything is right and I think it's done. Um, <clears throat> this is my process that I use for this. I hope you have enjoyed this journey with me. Thank you for listening to all the stuff that I said and thank you for supporting my work and see you next time. Thank you and rock and roll baby.